بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وَكُلَّ دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Okay, in the last lesson that we had, we finished the explanation of this little uh, booklet on what is the meaning of Tawood. What is the meaning of a Tawood? And all that remains now then is just a series of questions uh, that the Sheikh was asked at the end of his uh, lecture. And inshallah, we're just going to finish this series of lessons by just reading through these questions and answers inshallah. So the first question, the first question that the Sheikh was asked was a uh, question, may Allah reward you, what is the ruling upon the person who has, basically this question is to, is, is to do with a person who has like a kind of uh, presence in the United Nations or someone who refers back to the, if you like, the, the courts of justice or these, you know, justice courts or whatever they, whatever they have, and he has a position, <coughs> uh, 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 position of that nature with the United Nations. The Sheikh says, and obviously this is in relation to, uh, you know, bringing about uh, like uh, rectification, if you like, islah between the various countries and the relationships that they have with, with each other. So, what is a person who has a position or a role in that regard? So the question, the answer, the Sheikh says, uh, all praise is due to Allah, and he says that Allah has made the Muslims free from having any of these things. Why? Because He's given them the, le- the legislation, the Sharia, and the Sharia, and likewise the various law courts are present. Well, and all praise is due to Allah. And obviously, He's speaking here about uh, Saudi Arabia. So in every region, in every place. Uh, in, and in every location and in every, rather in every city, we, you find that you have the Islamic or the, the Sharia law courts. And so therefore it's obligatory to refer back and to seek judgment from the legislation of Allah the Mighty Majestic and to abandon, you know, seeking judgment from the, if you like, the customs and the habits of the various like tribes or whoever it might be. Whatever it might be, besides you know the, the, the Sharia, irrespective of whether these people, you know, uh, irrespective of what they call these, you know, these, uh, you know, these, you know, the, 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 these laws or these these things that they have, all of this is is not permissible. So the Sheikh says that rectification occurs when it's done with justice, and when it's done by the mutual pleasure of both parties, where both parties are concerned, they're both happy. And none, neither of them are actually compelled or forced to take, you know, whatever position, position they've taken. So this this type of thing here, that this type of rectification here, is something that is that is permissible. And the Sheikh brings uh, a quotation from the Prophet Ali from uh, one of his statements that a sulh, a sulh meaning to make a treaty or to make rectification between two two parties, is permissible amongst the Muslimin. He says something ja is permissible amongst the Muslimin. So therefore, the Sheikh says this sulh or this rectification is, uh, is 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 when both the parties concerned are, you know, pleased with with the outcome or with the situation, and it's done with justice. And then the Sheikh brings uh, an ayah from the Quran, in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "La khira fi kathir min najwahum illa illa man amra bi sadaqatin aw ma'rufin aw islah islahim bain al nas." That there is no good to be found in many of their secret conversations or the conversation that they have, except for the one who commands with the giving of charity, or the one who commands some you know, some goodness, some good deed, or the one who rectifies between the people. It brings about rectification between the people. So when this uh, sulh or this you know, rectification is based upon justice, and you know the, there isn't any kind of desire, meaning that there isn't any um, kind of um, 
goal or objective that anyone has behind this, this, you know, this rectification. There's no personal desires involved. And when it occurs by the mutual pleasure and con consent of the two parties concerned, there's no harm in that at all. That, 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 that's per perfectly fine and that's permissible in the Sharia. But when, when people start, for example, making it binding, that you have to, for example, apply these, or you have to refer back to these other laws, or these other legislations, whether they be the legislations of, of Jahili, meaning those things that the people have inherited from their ancestors, or other than that, then, and then they make the people, you know, make it binding upon the people. This is when, uh, and they refer back to them for judgment. This is what is a tagut. This itself would that will then become <coughs> something which is which is tagut, meaning like a false a false god. The next question is um, Question may Allah reward you Is it obligatory to hate The people who commit major sins the People who commit major sins Is it obligatory to hate them Even if they are from The close relatives So the, the Sheikh answers by bringing a verse from the Quran and this is a verse in Surah Al-Mujadil, uh, the, the 58th Surah, Al-Mujadil, so 58th Surah, verse number 22. And Allah says, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم. That you will not find the people who believe in Allah on the last day having affection or loving those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, even if they were their fathers, to the end of the verse. And it mentions like their fathers or their sons or their you know, relatives and so on and so forth. <coughs> so, so, in other words, what the Shaykh is saying, well, by bringing this verse, the Shaykh is implying uh, and, and stating that, yes, it's obligatory that we love, that, 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 that we hate the people of, uh, uh, people of, who commit major sins and that we don't love them. And then he says, and then after this he says that, is there anyone who is more closer to a person than his own father? And is there anything more close to, you know, uh, a person than his own son, his father or his, or his own son? So when such a person is an enemy to Allah, then, you know, uh, he is to free himself from him, even if he is his father. Obviously, this here is referring not in an absolute sense, because obviously these people who commit major sins are not disbelievers, they're not non-Muslims. So when you free yourself from them, when you hate them, that hate isn't like an absolute hate. It's not like, for example, the way you hate uh, the kuffar or the mushrikeen, you know, those people who are totally devoid of iman and who worship other than Allah. But this, this hate is a relative uh, hate. Why? Because they still have iman within them, and so therefore there is... So even though they have iman within them, we love them to the degree that they have Iman with them, but to the extent that they have this disobedience and they, they fall into medicines, then we hate them to that same extent. So this shouldn't be taken to mean that this is, you know, that this hatred is like an absolute hatred. No, so it's not, it's not like that. But obviously, if they commit medicines, and obviously we can't, you know, that there must be something in our hearts that dislikes what they're, do, what they're doing and dislike, and in turn disliking them to the degree and to the level uh, to which they fall into, the, into these sins. Next question is regarding a statement that some people say. Uh, so the Sheikh has asked, may Allah reward you. Is the saying of some of the people, Alhamdulillah illadhi la yuhmadu ala makruhin sawah. That's the like statement. Is, is the statement correct? And what the statement means is, all praise is due to Allah, uh, besides whom no one is praised for any dislikable thing. It's like uh, what, what, what this means is when whenever like something dislikable happens to you, then in that circumstance you still praise Allah, and but no one besides Allah is, is to be praised in, in 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 that circumstance. So is this statement correct? And the Sheikh says that I don't know of any basis for this statement. However, <coughs> however, a person can say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli halda. All praise be to Allah in any situation, in any circumstance. Meaning, irrespective of what my circumstances are, all praise is due to Allah. But as for this particular phrase here, or this statement that some people have brought about, 
Alhamdulillah, illa yuhmadu ala makruhin sawah. Then, this is, you know, uh, the Shaykh says, I don't, I don't know of any basis for this statement. Whereas the other statement, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, this is, has a statement in, or has a basis in the, in, 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 in the Sunnah. But as for this, then, even if it's on the tongues of people, even if the people say and it's found amongst the people that they, that they make the statement, then it, it has no basis. Next question is, uh, who are the Sufis? Who are the Sufiya? And are they present at this moment in time? And the answer, the Sheikh says, that the origin of these Sufis, their origin or the basis of these Sufis, were some worshippers who used to strive very hard, they used to, used to they used to strive very hard in worship and in abstaining from the worldly things. Right? So they used to exert themselves and strive, strive in performing worship and in, you know, keeping away from the worldly things. So the basis, so the basis upon which the, you know, the, the, the basis of these people was that they would, you know, they. Uh, you know, the, the, these people who would like, abandon the worldly things, they would strive in worship, and they would, you know, keep away from, you know, the, the indulgences and the other things of, of, you know, from from the worldly things. And this is how it used to be at the beginning. In the beginning times, this is how it was. It was just like, uh, like a type of piety and, you know, striving in worship and striving to not be tempted by the dunya. And this is how the situation was at the beginning. And in the beginning times, and I was talking here at you know at the very first times, that this affair used to be okay. It was like it was an issue, and it was done in a manner in which there was no there was, there was no problem. There was no kind of uh, extremism. There was no deviation. There was no nothing. It was all done in a in a kind of a, a correct way, you know, where the people would strive to to to, to worship. And you know, strive to uh, be upon piety and to keep away from from, from the worldly things. Uh, however, the Sheikh said that even though this is how these people were, this action of theirs in itself, the fact that you know the, they strove very hard and they, they kind of cut themselves off, they kind of cut themselves off from 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 the worldly life. You know, and, and they did it like in a, in a pretty severe way as well. He said that this thing isn't something that we can really praise. It's not something that's praiseworthy. Like in the religion, it's not something that's praiseworthy where, you know, you exert and you strive and you just cut yourself off from everything in, in, the, in the worldly life. This, 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 is, this is not something that, that we can say is praiseworthy. Uh, but the Sheikh says at the beginning, uh, <coughs> you know, it's not, it's not something praiseworthy from every single angle. But these people, even though these people that doing what they were doing, we, you know, they, they didn't have any kind of deviation with them. They didn't have any shirk with them. They didn't associate any partners with with Allah, and they didn't have any extremism, like you know, reaching the level of gulu, which is like a type of extremism. They didn't have that thing with them, even though they kind of strove and they tried hard and they they, they exerted themselves in worship. And they cut themselves from 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 the world, like in 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 a kind of severe way. At this stage, there wasn't any ghulu or kind of extremism, and they didn't fall into shirk and other other affairs like that. However, after time, this, this situation after after a certain time, what happened was this situation it kind of transformed and it changed, and this you know practice that they did, which was known as the sawwuf. Then it kind of changed over time up until shirk entered into it and kufr entered into it. And you know, the, the, the beliefs of these people changed to such a degree that they, that they claimed or that they used to believe that the person who truly knows Allah, that the person who is an arif, person who knows Allah, is the one who has directly reached Allah. Right? Who knows Allah? through direct <coughs> communication and that such a person isn't in need of following the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right, so this is the degree to which it, it, the situation changed to where these people they said 
in essence, that the Sharia is just for the normal people. The Sharia and acting upon the pillars and acting upon abiding by the Quran and the Sunnah, that's just, that's just for the common people. They need the prophets, they need the messengers. And as for us, then we have a direct communication with Allah and you know, this, the, 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 we're not in need of the prophets and messengers and you know, the, w- w- what the common people need. This is the degree that they went to. And they said that we take from Allah directly. We take from Allah directly. And that Allah, he, you know, He commands them and Allah prohibits them and you know, they obey Him in this manner through this, through, through, this, through this direct channel. And then they also said, these people, they also said that a person who is a murid, meaning like a kind of a student or a devotee, that the way he behaves with his sheikh, the way he behaves with his sheikh, is just like a dead body is with the one who is washing it. Right? So just like a dead body is with the one who is washing it, meaning the dead body is there, it doesn't move, it's still, and you know, it's, 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 it's really in the hands of the, the one who is washing it. Then in the same way these people say, the Sufis say that this is how you have to be with your sheikh. Uh, meaning, you basically you blindly follow him, you accept everything he says, you don't move without him, he's basically in charge of you, and you know, and this is how it is, and that only through this manner can you reach Allah. So basically what they're saying is, that there are some people who directly communicated with Allah, and they found the so-called secret or whatever it is, and that Allah informs them directly, <coughs> and, and for anybody else to reach that same level, they have to basically go through these you know, through the through 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 the sheikh, and then when that person reaches that that same status, then anyone after him has to go through this person. So basically, they have this like idea of like a chain or whatever it is. But in any sense, uh, in any in any in any, in, you know in any in, in any case, what happened was that this is how initially when it started off in in this manner where these people just and this was at the time of the messenger or just shortly thereafter, they were just exerting worship, and they exerted in piety and whatever. It changed over time up until it reached this level here. And this here, this level here, like some of these ideas and some of these beliefs that we've spoken of, there's no doubt that this is actually disbelief. This is kufr, this is disbelief. And even further than this, so even from this stage, he went even further, and he went to the stage where they said, where they spoke of this belief that everything in existence. That basically there's, there's only one existence. Right? There's no such thing as a creator and the creation, but the whole of existence is just one existence. And all of it is Allah. So everything in existence is Allah. There's no such thing as a distinction between a creator and the creation, the created and the creator. Rather, existence in itself as a whole is just one. And there's nothing, there's, there's no divisions or separations therein, and everything is Allah. So everything in the creation and everything that we see around us, this is part. All of it is is part and parcel of, you know, of of, of Allah Himself, and uh, and so therefore built upon this belief that anyone who worshipped anything, he is still worshiping Allah. So therefore, according to this belief, now anyone who worships a tree, he is still worshiping Allah. Anyone who worships a prophet or a messenger, he is still worshiping Allah. Anyone who worships a stone, he's still worshipping Allah. So it doesn't matter what you worship, because the whole of existence is just a single existence, and Allah is that existence, including everything in the creation. This means that all of the pagans, all of the mushrikeen and everything they worship, they have now become worshippers of Allah. They, they, they have now become people of Tawheed, so to speak, according to this, this uh, deviant belief. So, uh, so, so these people who worship the trees, these people who worship the idols, all of them are worshipping Allah. You know, this, this is how it came. So this is how, from the beginning, it began as something that we couldn't really, although we wouldn't praise it and say it was like a praiseworthy thing, this exertion in worship, but over time, it, you know, it changed over centuries up until it reached this particular stage uh, here. And the Sheikh says, you know, it reached the stage where you had certain people, like for example, Ibn Arabi, uh, this was a person, um, an Al Hallaj, you know, Ibn Arabi. He made statements like they made statements like, you know, uh, I don't know who is, who is the, you know, I don't know who is the who is the Lord. Uh, sorry, I don't know who is the wor- worshipper and who is the worshipped. You know, I, don't, I can't tell the difference between the two. Who is the one that I'm worshiping and who is the one who's doing the worshiping? Meaning, 
I can't distinguish between the creator and, and the created. And you know, other people like Allah Hallaj and you know who would say that I am the truth and Al Haq, meaning that you know he's 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 reached basically in essence that he's he's Allah. And also you had like Atil Misani. Atil Misani is another person and this man now again according to this belief, this this you know really evil belief where everything is just a single existence, this, this man here Atil Misani, he claimed and he said so therefore the various things which are prohibited, for example, between, for example, you know, um, you know, a mother and a son, and a brother and a sister, all of those things are permissible. Why? Because, because, why? Because those laws are not. The Sharia doesn't apply because everything in existence is a single existence, always Allah, and we don't distinguish between one person and, and, and another. You know, so this is the level to which these people went to, like this Atil Misani as is explained by Ibn Taymi and, 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 and others that you know they made it permissible for, for a man to you know to have relations with his daughter and for a, a woman to have daughter and you know, all these other evil things why because they said that the Sharia doesn't apply and because that this is this is this is so these kind of evil things followed on from this evil uh, belief and these were you know these names Ibn Arabi Al Hallaj Atil Misani Ibn Sabi'in these are just names of some of their you know, most uh, extreme people, the more the, who who were the most uh, transgressing of those people who you know who who spoke of these evil beliefs and who propounded them and who brought about these you know these ideas. So this you know this reached the level of of this you know very evil and despicable type of of kufr of this disbelief. And then the Sheikh says that these Sufis today, what you find that these Sufis today, you find that most of the things with which they worship all of them are innovated affairs they are newly invented matters which have no basis in the legislation you know the whole of their the whole of their if you like everything that they are upon and everything that they traverse upon in their in their so-called ibadah most of it or all of it is upon innovation all of it is innovation all of it is newly invented affairs which have no basis in in, in, in the sharia and likewise Whatever their leaders command them, then they will do it. You know, they will treat that as being obligatory. They won't say, for example, it's obligatory upon us that we follow the messenger, Ali Sallallahu They won't say that. What they will say is that the messenger is only for the common people. Messenger is only for the common people. As for us, then we only follow the most special and unique people. Meaning, so what they mean by this is that there are some people who are able to communicate directly with Allah and so they don't need prophets and messengers and the message of the prophets and messengers doesn't apply to them so uh, and then there are other people who say and then there are other people who say that when a person reaches a certain level of knowledge of Allah when he reaches a certain level of knowledge and acquaintance of Allah then all of the sharia um, you know all of the sh- all of the sharia uh, uh, obligations and the responsibilities are no longer obligatory upon him. Right? So he doesn't need to pray anymore. He doesn't need to fast anymore. He doesn't need to com- perform Hajj uh, because you know he's reached that degree <coughs> of direct knowledge of Allah, and he's 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 basically he's reached Allah directly, and so therefore nothing applies to him by way of legislation. As for the legislation and the Sharia, this is just for the common people who need the prophets and messengers. So this is another kind of statement that they that they have, which is very 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 evil. And so then they say, as a result of this, that nothing is haram upon us. Fornication is not haram upon us, so we can commit zina. Even this homosexuality, this itself is not prohibited. And and then in this manner they kind of say that nothing is actually prohibited, and they they make everything permissible and lawful for themselves. And this is found amongst the Sufis. This is, this is actually found. Why? Because this person has reached Allah and then the Shaykh says, is there any disbelief after this disbelief? You know, this, this, this is like the extreme limit of kufr. This is like the extreme limit where, of kufr that we, can, that we can reach. And then they say, in addition to all of this, they have other statements, these people, they say that their Shaykhs, the Sufi Shaykhs, that they have control 
over affairs of the creation. That these sheikhs, you know, these sheikhs who are the Sufi sheikhs, who are the founders or who are at the heads of the various paths of the Sufis, that they actually have control over aspects of the creation. You know, they can give life, they can take life, they can feed people, they can withhold sustenance from people. And, you know, the sheikh is that this, this, the sawwaf, this is the situation that it's reached. This is, this is where it's reached. And the sheikh then says that when we look at misguidance, this is how misguidance is. It begins as something in a, you know, it begins as something very small and it appears to be in the form of a very good intention, with a you know, very nice intention. And then over time it changes and it transforms until it ends up being something very, very reprehensible, very evil, very ugly, very despicable. This is how it is. This is how misguidance always occurs. It doesn't occur at the beginning something very evil and nasty and people see it straight away. No. It begins in the beginning with something that appears to be good and praiseworthy and something that's done with a good intention, like in this example here. And then slowly but surely over time, over time, over time, it changes. But the people don't see it changing and then it changes into something which reaches this level of shirk and, and, and kufr. So, the Shaykh says, like, look in this example, that these people at the beginning, at the, very, uh, at the very beginning, when they used to abstain from the world, you know, they used to cut themselves off from the worldly things, and they used to exert themselves in worship, this in itself wasn't really, it wasn't really uh, in opposition to the path of the Messenger, Ali you know, it wasn't really in opposition. Uh, sorry, 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 what, what the Shaykh is saying that, yeah, sorry, what, what the Shaykh is saying that when, when this Zuhud, when they took it to a level which was incorrect, when they were very severe in cutting themselves off from the world, then because this in itself was in opposition to the way of the Messenger, why? Because there's no extremism in, in the religion and there's no cutting, you know, the Messenger didn't tell the people to cut themselves off from the worldly affairs. So when, when this itself was in opposition to the path of the Messenger, that's why it changed and it eventually went to this level that we've described. But as for those people, as for the other people who actually adhered to whatever the messenger came with, right? So the messenger, وسلم, he came with moderation. Moderation in worship. Be moderate in your worship. And, you know, even if you do something small, and as long as you do it regularly and you stick to it, you know, be, be upon moderation. So this is what the messenger came with. So those people who adhered to the, whatever the messenger came with in their, in their worship, they didn't go to extremes in their worship, then these people, they didn't, you know, they didn't change. You know, nothing, nothing that they were upon changed and you know, went to the level that I did with these other people, the people of the Sawaf. Why? Because these people, in what they were doing, they didn't, there was nothing of opposition to the Sunnah found amongst them. They didn't oppose the sunnah in anything, so therefore it didn't change and transform into something which is, you know, complete misguidance because they adhered to the sunnah and they adhered to it, you know, with moderation. So then the Shaykh says, because these people they stuck to the straight path, the right path. But as for those other people who began to act upon innovations and newly invented affairs, then, you know, this was the end result of taking that approach and refuges, you know, with Allah. That's the end of that question. The next question, the Sheikh was asked, um, May Allah reward you, what is the difference between a person who changes the ruling of Allah and a person who rules by other than Allah? What is the difference between the one who changes or alters the judgment of Allah and the one who rules by other than, by other than what Allah has, has judged? And the answer is that all of it is the same. It's all the same. But this is from the angle of just you know, the, the fact that this phrase is used that someone changes the ruling of Allah, this statement is used only from the angle of showing more, um, you know, sh um, you know, it's kind of like showing more of a strong, uh, up, you know, um, how can I put it, um, rejection upon that person. Right, to use this, like normally would say that someone has judged by other than what Allah has revealed. But to say someone has changed the ruling of Allah, this is from the angle of showing more rejection against this person. You know, making his action to be more reprehensible, 
and evil. So this statement is used to to bring about that 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 you know that, that effect. Because the Shaykh says that when a person rules by other than what Allah has revealed, he has in effect, in that instance, changed the judgment of Allah. And when he rules by other than what Allah has, has, has revealed, then he is jair, he is someone who is oppressive. He is someone who is oppressive. And because in, in what he's judged, there is oppression. Whereas in what Allah has judged, there is justice. And... You know, this oppression occurs in whatever is besides Allah's judgment. Next question was, may Allah uh, reward you. When a person, he, you know, he concerns himself with the pillars, the five pillars, and remembering Allah, and then he keeps away from all of the evil deeds, you know, the, 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 the shameful deeds, and all of the things which lead towards shirk, but he's been put to trial by you know taking the affair of looking at things which are prohibited he takes it lightly and he listens to like songs you know he takes these affairs very lightly what is the situation here the sheikh says that these are all major sins you know looking at what Allah has prohibited and listening to what Allah has prohibited all of this prohibited all of this is considered to be from the major sins so he must make tawbah from that he must repent from that however it doesn't expel him from the religion but he is considered to be a sinful person a person who commits major sins, but if he repents to Allah, then Allah will turn, in turn, turn to him. The next question is a question from a person in Yemen. He says, uh, verily, uh, from, from a person called Abdullah in, 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 in Yemen, this is, uh, that, that, that there is a hadith in which it is stated that Tama'im and Tiwala are shirk. These are two things which will be explained in the answer. At Tama'im, which are like talismans, and that Tiwala is Tiwala is like a type of magic. That in a hadith there occurs that this is that these two things are shirk. So what exactly is Tama'im and what exactly is a Tiwala? May Allah reward you. So the Shaykh says that the Prophet Ali Salam said in a hadith in a ruqa wa tama'im wa tiwala shirkun. That these three things are ruqa, ruqyas, and at tama'im, talismans and at tiwala all of them are shirk so there are three things here that are considered to be shirk what, what are each of these things a ruqa what, what is what is meant by here a ruqya is not the ruqya which is permissible but the ruqya that used to be done by the people of jahiliyyah these people what they would do is that they would call upon other than Allah and they would seek help from the jinn seek aid from the jinn and from the devils and this is how they would they would make their ruqya they would make these incantations and you know they, they they would call upon the jinn, they would seek aid from the jinn, they would make statements involving shirk, they would make du'a which involves shirk, and so this type of ruqya, this type of uh, ruqya is haram, it's it's it, 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 it's shirk. And as for <coughs> the ruqya, you know, for example, when you read something from the Quran or from the supplications from the Sunnah, then this is permissible. There's no harm in that. There's no harm in that. When you read these things in order to protect yourself from the jinn, from the, the, any other type of evil, this is permissible. But what is prohibited here in the hadith is that which involves shirk and seeking aid from, 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 from the jinn. And then at-tama'im, at-tama'im is the plural of tamima, and tamima is something that a person hangs, like a talisman. And this could be hung, so a person can hang it on their body, so they can hang something on their body, or they might hang it in certain places, for example, like sometimes these people, they hang things in their cars, as the Sheikh says, they might hang something in, in the car or on the house, whatever it is, you know, and they claim that this will prevent or protect them from the evil eye and from the jinn and, and, and so on and so forth. The Sheikh says that this is prohibited. This is this is not permissible. This is prohibited because it is this is considered to be shirk, as Allah say, as Allah's messenger said, in the ruqa wa tamaim wa tiwala shirkun. Why? Because when a person does this, in essence. He is placing his dependence upon other than Allah. Right? So it's as if he's depending upon something besides Allah. And you know, he's depending upon something besides Allah to remove the harm or to repel the harm, and all of this is shirk. And the third thing, atiwala, atiwala, this is like a type of magic which is performed, 
and these people claim that by this magic they can make a woman become, uh, you know, a woman love a man or a man love a woman. Or the other way around, they can make a man hate a woman and a, and a, a woman hate a man. Like in marriage, for example, they can cause separation between a man and a, and a, and a wife. Or the other way around. And the Sheikh says that these, this is from the actions of the magicians. This is what is done by the magicians. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in, in, in an ayah, فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا this is, in the, this is in the ayah which speaks about the two, you know, the Harut and Marut, the two angels who came as a test upon the people to teach them magic. And you know, they, they told the people that we are, a, we are a trial for you. But these people, you know, they, they, they began to learn things from these two uh, angels. As Allah says, مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ That they learned from them, that would, that, that by which they would separate between a man and his wife. They would cause separation between a man and his wife. So this is the third thing. This is Kibula, this is like a type of magic. And this also is, is uh, shirk. And that, that's the end of the questions and answers. And that's also, also the end of the explanation of this booklet on the meaning of at -Tagut. And with that we finish inshallah and in the next lesson that we have we'll begin uh, we'll begin another one of these uh, small booklets from this book inshallah ta'ala. Now okay. Exactly. Assalamu alaikum. Right. Right, you know, just for decoration purposes, say you hang something up. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that if some people hang up CDs and have grand eyes. Yeah. Unless it's for an educational purpose, it's not allowed. Unless it's, for example, you have something on there, like a post or something, and by that you intend. That's going to remind me to learn or to memorize or whatever it is. Yeah. Unless it's for educational purposes. Even like now we can get like, you know, if it's for education then there's no, there's no, this is okay. If it's for decoration, that's not permissible. People have them like CDs and that. They hang them. Oh yeah. They've got Qurisi written on them. That's not, yeah, yeah. That's not, yeah. <coughs> Even that, using the Qur'an, the, that, that's not correct either. Because, because none of the Sahaba used to do it. And uh, like these people have, you know, they claim that you know, these things that they're wearing, that they claim that they have Quran in them, but it's not Quran. It's it's like magic spells, and they have these funny characters and these like names of jinn. That's all these people are wearing. That's what they have in them, and all of that is it's not permissible. Um, you know, like in Saudi, you know, there are no such signs. They have like two certifications that Allah would Yeah, you know. that's to remind people. I think, as far as I'm aware, I mean, in the house, the same on the walls. Case, That's like on a journey, isn't it? If Allah mm. alim. But if it's in the house, you know, again, it depends on what your intention is. If it's like just to remind you to remember Allah so you don't become heedless of Allah. Mm. And that in itself, I'm not sure what the ruling would be on that. Allah alim. But if it's, for example, you know, you've got something on the wall which contains, you know, um, Supplications that the messenger used to make, for example, like you get these posters. That's education, you know, where you get these big posters and you've got all supplications and what the means are in English. That's education. Mm -hmm. Or you've got, for example, a poster with verses in the Quran which are supplications which have been made, like Rabbana, Atina, Fadunya, and all these verses that begin with Rabbana. Yeah? That's education. But. So they do have, you know, is that what the mosque they've got? They've got the doors just outside the toilets and just outside the woodwork, yeah? That's like, again, that's like a, a kind of reminder, isn't it? Yeah. It's not decoration. Clearly that's not decoration, is it? Yeah. It's there too, but as for that practice in and of itself, I, I don't know what the ruling is upon it. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not permissible, I'm not saying it's permissible, I, I just don't know what the ruling is. But I know it's from the angle of education. You know what's that even in Pakistan? They, they put, you know, like, mashallah on top of the house. On the houses, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that. Mm. Yeah. This is what the intention is that we're going to do. They think that in the South is going to bring protection, but yeah. that's what they're going to do. Possibly, yes, yeah, from the same, same angle, isn't it? Yeah. 
Maybe we should know statements of the Sufis as well. So if you give examples of the statements, I don't know who is the worship. That's Ibn Arabi, yeah, that's, that's like in the form of poetry. Ibn Arabi. The one who was saying about Muslims who have incest relationships. Tilmisani. That's a Tilmisani. So they've got like a sex as well, haven't they? And the Sufis. Yeah. Which are the worst ones? Well, well, they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, Naqshbandis. It's pretty severe. But they're all, you have Naqshbandis, you have Chishtis, you have. There's so many. But generally speaking, that's what they're upon. And they're mostly Pakistani, are they? No, no, no. no. Asian. No. Amongst the Arabs, you have yeah. Syria, there's all sorts, Jordan, there's all sorts, Egypt, there's all sorts. Many places, Turkey, everywhere. Yeah. Far East, Indonesia, Malaysia, everywhere. 